Hey everyone, today we're here with Tina Haidari, who's a D1 at USC's Herman Ostro School of Dentistry. We're going to learn a little bit about her journey to dental school and her experience as a first year during COVID. Thanks for being here today, Tina. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. It's a pleasure to have you. So can we just get started with, you know, hearing a brief description about where you're from originally, where you went to undergrad, and if you took a gap here or not? Yeah, of course. So I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Well, like a small um, like town in Atlanta. So it's called Roswell, Georgia. And um, for undergrad, I, first I went to Georgia State University, but um, not the school in downtown Atlanta. And then I realized like within my first year, I kind of wanted more of like the college experience. So I decided to transfer to the University of Georgia. And so I did that the second semester of my sophomore year. And I was there until I graduated. And then I didn't take a gap year or anything. I went straight into dental school. And then in undergrad, I majored in biology and I minored in nutrition. Very cool. So how, how long did you know you wanted to be a dentist for? And like, what was the reasoning for that? So I feel like um, if you ask a lot of dental students, they'll say they were pre-med at first, and I'm one of those as well. So I always thought I wanted to be a medical doctor, but then I started shadowing medical doctors, and I was like, I don't know if this is for me. Like, I didn't really love it, and so I was like, okay, let's try dentistry. So then I started shadowing a couple dentists, and I was like, okay, this is like has everything that I'm looking for in a career. So I was like, maybe this is the path for me. So then I started looking more into it and I decided that I did want to be a dentist. And I decided that the summer going into undergrad. Okay. And so what what was like the reasoning for dentistry specifically, like your personal statement in like a sentence? Yeah. So um, I don't have any dentists in my family, so I'll be the first one, but I had a lot of close family friends that were dentists. So I started shadowing them. And then I remember um, during my first shadowing experience, there was like an older man um, that was like the first patient that I got to shadow. And he was like, why would you want to be a dentist? Like you work in a black hole upside down your whole life. And like, when he said that, I was like, Oh, like you kind of do do that, but I like that aspect of it because there's always, you never know what you're expecting. And with every patient, it's so different. And I like the mystery aspect and like the different, um, the differences that you get to encounter every day. And it's not the same thing every single day. So I like that part of it. I like that. So in order to get into dental school, like without a gap here and all, I'm sure you did really well on your DAT. What was your study schedule like and how did you feel going through it? Yeah, so I took my DAT the summer after my sophomore year, which I originally I was planning on just taking it the summer after my junior year because I know that's uh, typically what people do. But um, I was really lucky at UJ. I had a really amazing pre-dental advisor and she was like, um, you just took OCHEM 2. So I really recommend you just take your DAT and just get it over with and like, um, like if you really do have to retake it for whatever reason, you give yourself enough time and you're not stressed and everything. So I did that and I used um, DAT Bootcamp, which I recommend that to literally everyone. I think it's the best resource you could possibly use. I also use Destroyer as well, but I don't think that's tech, like really necessary. Um, if anything, if someone's like math skills are... Um, not fully up there maybe like just get like the DAT or the destroyer for the math section and that'll be really helpful but um I think DAT boot camp alone is like plenty to cover everything and then I studied for two months which like I studied every because like I'm the type of person I knew like if the person next to me studied for a month I would need to study for two months because it just takes me longer to like digest material so I gave myself two months in the summer, didn't do anything besides study morning to night, but it paid off. So it was worth it. So something that I've heard is that this, the scores that you get on your practice tests for DAT bootcamp are usually like a couple points lower than your uh, actual DAT score. Did you have that same experience? So um, I know like the DAT bootcamp has changed a little since I um, used it but when I used it there were 10 practice tests and the first five were like the easier ones and then the second five were the more difficult ones and my score came out to be kind of like the average of the two sets 
So I feel like it was pretty um, representative of how I was doing on the practice test. But I mean, I know everyone's different. Like you have test anxiety, like you might get nervous on actual test day or whatever. And like every test is different. So it's kind of just luck mm -hmm. at that point. But Yeah, I feel that. So can you walk us through a little bit uh, about your like interview day? Like who interviewed you? And again, like how you felt after it was over? Yeah, so um, honestly, I would say that USC probably had the hardest interview that I did, in my opinion, okay. um, just because there were two parts to it. There was like the MMI, the multiple mini interviews, which that part was um, like I was used to that and I had done it in other interviews and stuff. But then there's another portion that USC does, and it's like the PBL portion. So PBL, um, for those I don't know, it's called problem. It stands for problem based learning. And that's how we learn our didactic courses. So we don't have like multiple different like lecture classes for all the science classes. We just do it through PBL and it's just through like um, cases with like you have an, you have a patient and you're given um, like descriptions of the patient. You kind of work through it with like small groups to figure out what's wrong with the patient. And that's how you learn your sciences. And so during the interview, you like do a practice one. And um, it was really hard at first, honestly, because you it was the first time you're doing it. You really don't know what you're doing. You know, you're being watched and like everything you say matters. So I thought that was hard in that sense. But at the same time, you get to kind of experience what school here would be like. So it's nice to get an idea before you're like, okay, I want to go here or not. So Yeah. So like you can judge the school and like see if you like the way they, you know, teach you. And then also the school can see if you're a good fit for them, right? Exactly. Exactly. Because PBL is honestly not for everyone, but now looking back on it i personally enjoy it a lot more than i think i would like if i just had like multiple lecture classes a day mm -hmm. so something i was wondering is usc's interview so you said it was probably one of the harder ones that you had that usually like um disillusions some applicants right and they choose to go like some to some other school what made you want to go to usc and what do you think makes usc so unique yeah, so um, I really enjoyed all the students I got to meet on my interview day. And I think that was part of the deciding factor for me because, I mean, they they go here. So you kind of see, like, do they like going here? Do they enjoy their life? Because it is four years of your life. So you don't want to be miserable going here. And so um, seeing how, like, how, how they talked about the school and how excited they were and how much they liked it made me feel better and like I really did want to move out of state because I did live in Georgia my whole life so I just wanted to try something different and um, I picked the furthest state I could have from home but um, I like that and even the, though the interview was hard all the faculty that did interview me I really did appreciate how they made sure that you were sure about wanting to go to this school and you weren't it wasn't just like oh if I get in like to any school I'll go here like if you want to go here make sure you actually want to go here and um, I like that part of it and I really enjoyed the campus and everything I learned that day I thoroughly did enjoy and California and LA like that was really um, cool for me too. I was like, it would be really cool to live here at least for four years and see how I like it. So there's a lot of different factors that made me decide to pick USC in the end. So when they asked you, like, why do you want to come here in addition to, you know, saying, oh, you want to move out state and try something new? What else did you say? Yeah, so um, I had a really close family friend and she graduated from um, USC last year. And so she would always talk so highly of the school. So I really, I had her telling me like, this is a good school. And she like really knew me. She's like, I think you would really like it here and you would fit in well and stuff. So that helped as well. And um, just interviewing other schools when you're there on interview day, you can kind of sense like, would I fit in here? Would I like it here? Like, is this the school for me? And no one can make that decision but you. And you really can't make it until you go and actually are there or like you do interview them and you do talk to students and faculty because through the interview process, you'll see like, okay, like I interviewed this school, like, okay, like the student, I don't think I would like it here. This is not the best fit for me. And it might be the best fit for someone else. It's just everyone is so different. So I feel like you're the, you'll know in the end, like what school is the best fit for you. So I'm wondering, like, could pre-dance get a feel for what the school is about through like pre-dental events hosted by schools or like in specifically USC? 
Um, I'm sure yes, because I, I personally didn't do a pre-dental um, event at USC, but I did a lot back home in my um, state school, dental school. And so it really does give you a sense of not only the school, but like dentistry in general as well. And just like what cur the curriculum is like, what the rigor is like, um, what's like a student's day-to-day -day, um, like life is like. So I think it is really beneficial and it does look good on an application, even though like I didn't do USC's, like they like the fact that I did do like my state school and they understand like, for me, it was more difficult to like fly out here to do it. And so it made more sense for me to just do it back home. But um, I think it is a really great opportunity if you can do one. So what are some pre dental events that uh, USC hosts? Um, so I know they have like a pre-dental day, which is what I did back home as well. So I feel like if you can do it, definitely, if you, especially if you're from California, do the pre-dental day. And it just kind of gives you like a snippet of like what a day in the life of a dental student is like. So I would highly recommend doing that. Great. And honestly, just reaching out to dental students, like if you do like a specific school, like find them on Instagram or something and just send them a DM and be like, hey, I'm, I really am thinking about um, like applying here. I w really want to go here. How do you like it? And just ask any questions because I feel like anyone you ask, like they'll be more than happy to help you. And maybe that, that'll help make your decision a lot easier in the end. So I highly recommend doing that as well. So something that I'm now wondering is how has your transition been from uh, being a pre-dent to finally being a first year in dental school and like especially like how has COVID affected that as well? So with COVID, like it's affected everything and it's made life so unpredictable. But um, in a sense, I feel like it made the transition easier and harder. It made it easier in the sense that I feel like um, the load is a little less than what it typically would have been. Um, I mean, we're not in lab as often as we would have been um, pre-COVID. So it helped you transition into dental school a little easier. But I mean, it is harder in the sense that um, like I, we still haven't met every single person in our dental class because we're always in small groups in school and everything's on Zoom. So you're kind of just sitting at home like hours on end, like staring at your computer. So that's not fun either. But I mean, everyone's making the best of it and hopefully things will get better, so. So can you tell us a little bit about the typical day in your life right now? Like, are you guys all virtual or hybrid? How, how is it going for you guys right now? So every day of the week is a little different. Um, like we have our PBL um, class twice a week. So Mondays and Fridays, and then half of the class has it in the mornings. And then the other half has it in the afternoon. And that's for three hours um, for each day. And then throughout the week, so our very first trimester, we had lab once a week, every other week for four hours. And then again, so we were split up into four small groups. And um, some people had like the morning lab, lab session, some people had the afternoon. And then our second trimester, we had um, lab once a week, but every week was for a different class. And then um, this trimester, we have more labs, but it is still like all our lectures and everything are online. And um, I, I should clarify this. So we do have PBL, but we still do have lectures for like our dental classes, like um, cardiology or operative or morphology. So we do still have lectures for those classes and those are all hybrid as well or online. So sorry. So then what, what exactly do you guys use that PBL um, technique in? So, so we use those for like our, just like the science classes. So like um, your microbio, your biology, like all those classes you learn through PBL. So you're in small groups. So there's eight of us in a group and you have a facilitator. And so you meet on Zoom and um, every session you get a new part added to the case. And then um, you kind of just talk through like, okay, what's wrong with this patient? And you like list out all your facts and then you come up with ideas. And then um, every student gets like a learning need. And like, that's how we kind of just learn our class, like the topics that we need to learn. And so you become like the pro on your topic. And then the next session, you kind of um, teach everyone else about what you learned. 
and then you get like another part added to it. And so we have five of those a trimester. So we have three for midterms and two for finals. I see. Okay. So, and you mentioned earlier that it's been difficult um, getting to know your, like all of your class, but have you been able to get some strong connections with at least a few of your classmates? Like in maybe form like study groups or just hang out just outside of school? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I feel like a part of that is you kind of just have to, have to be really open and just be like, hey, do you want to go grab lunch or go grab coffee? Or um, do you want to like sign up for the same like after lab hours and go together? And so I feel like um, my class has been really good at doing that. And I have um, made a good strong group of friends. And um, especially like one friend I have, like, we studied together for all of our exams. So it's been really helpful at least having that um, because it is, it does get lonely at home and you're like out here. I don't have my family out here and I live by myself. So um, it is, has been nice to have that in my classmates and um, kind of just reassured me that I did make the right decision in picking USC. But um, it's still fun because like when we go for after hours, so we can still go to, you can sign up for lab to go in like after hours, like from six to 10 at night. Um, and it's fun because every time you go, you kind of just meet new people because you'll meet people that aren't in your specific lab group. And that's always fun because you're like, oh, I met someone new today, so. Very cool. And so USC, you guys are graded, right? It's, it's not pass fail. So how, how do you think that affects the atmosphere for your class? Like, do you guys have like that little sense of competition or are you guys very collaborative? Because you guys, obviously you guys learn in the problem-based learning style. So you guys have to work with each other to some degree. So, yeah. yeah. So we do have grades, it's not pass fail. And that was actually like one of the questions I asked in all of my interviews um, to the students. I was like, are you guys more competitive or collaborative? And some schools were honest and they're like, we're really competitive. And so I was like, okay, this is not the best fit for me. Cause you do kind of compete all of undergrad trying to get into dental school. And then like, once you're here, like, okay, I'm done competing. And you do want to work together. You're all going to be a dentist after four years. So I feel like there's no point in um, competing. And I feel like USC is very, very collaborative. Um, like we have a class drive and like everyone's very like um, supportive and like everyone will share their notes or we have a group me. And if someone needs help with something, everyone's always there. Someone's always there to help you. So in that sense, I would for sure say we are very, very collaborative and it's not a competitive atmosphere. That's great. And so something that I was, cause I was wondering, um, it's usually competitive because people want to get into like specialties and, or like some other um, thing after they graduate. Does USC have like all the specialties available for people to go ahead and shadow or just learn about more? Yes, um, we do have all the specialties. And um, I know that especially your second year of dental school. So what I'm going into, you kind of get to rotate through all the specialties to see if you do want to specialize or if you want to maybe look more into one specialty to see if you actually do want to, or if you just want to stay general. So um, you do get a sense of if you do want to specialize or just stay general. Yeah, okay. So there's plenty of opportunity and like, um what if someone wants to get involved with like research or like other clubs do you, does USC offer all that so yes we do have a lot of research opportunities and clubs but it's in the sense like we are in grad school so you kind of have to um kind of make the opportunities for yourself and reach out to people like it's not people aren't just going to come up to you and be like do you want to do this you want to do this you have to make the effort to um reach out to people and same with like specialties if you do you want to specialize in something reach out to the head of that department be like can I shadow you or can I do this or um, are you looking for another person on your research team and you kind of just have to reach out to people yourself and That's very cool so it seems like all the resources are there it's just like what you make of it right exactly exactly awesome Tina thank you so much for your time today uh, if our viewers have any further questions is it cool if they reach out to you either through like email or social media yeah, of course. Any questions, I'm more than happy to help. Awesome. And uh, I'll include all that information in the link or in the description of the video. Again, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Everyone at home, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when we upload new content, hit the notification bell. 
If you have any questions for us at Future DDS, you can always DM us on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll try to reply as soon as possible. And until next time, we'll see you all then.